All right, now that I have my custom brush, notice I'm just going to stay on the paint tool a lot. And if I want to use the navigator, I can use that to zoom in and out. I can also use Command plus, Command minus, and any time I want to get the whole image on screen, I can just hit Command zero. But when you're building up this shape painting, I want to look at my layers. And if I turn off that gray background, I want to fill in all of these little white spaces with color. So I might go between having a gray background and having the white background, but these are all locked. So I'm always only painting on the one unlocked layer, which is my shape painting layer. And without the sketch underneath, it doesn't look like much now. So let's, let's keep building. I can hold down Option, that changes my paintbrush tool into a color, an eyedrop tool, which allows me to steal colors. I can even steal the white from layers below. If I want some blue in there, I like to throw in some weird colors sometimes to adjust to. And that's why I have these different sources. I like to put some reds around the eyes. Notice I'm not getting into the detail of the eye at all. And I'm only painting at 70%. So that layers everything up. So I'm creating lots and lots of complex colors just by layering these up. And it's fun painting something furry because your, your hand and your brush, they can go in all these different directions and it's just fine. So I can kind of get all the gradations between just by stealing the colors from myself. Using my different references. Trying to get rid of all those in-between white spots. Purples, blues. This isn't digital coloring, so this isn't like I just have to do variations on one color. I can be full spectrum anywhere I want. I can make this crazy and colorful. But right now I'm just trying to get a sense of actually portraying my dog as based on my photo reference. But not a slave to it. The best digital paintings will not just look like the, the photo, they'll they'll have more personality, you know, more life to them. We're not just trying to be a camera. So he has some teeth, some I'm just going to put something in loosely there now, but I'll, in more refined painting stages, I can go in and define those a little bit better. At this stage, it's really good to have a darkest dark. I think the darkest dark is going to be in by the eye, and it's kind of good if that darkest dark isn't black, you know, but is instead layering of certain colors like blue and red. darkest purple that I can use. And that helps. Now I'm focusing a whole lot on the head. I don't want to ignore in this kind of combined human 
dog portrait. I don't want to ignore the the clothing. And you want, even though we're just getting introduced to digital painting, you want each piece of it to feel as considered as every other part, which is challenging, but it's a good, it's a worthwhile goal. Okay, so before I, instead of working a lot more on the top here, I want to start bringing some of that. into the rest. And I like having this that, that rough sketch layer underneath. I don't need to worry about covering it up because it's on its own layer. Start establishing some of these dark darks, these shadows. wispy highlights that come through. Remember, if I want white, I actually have to paint white. If I need to, I can go back to that background and turn on the gray. So I need those, those highlights. Can't just let it be the default of the paper coming through or of that blank canvas on the bottom coming through. So, so we shape paint, we shape paint with lots of energy and we want to fill up all this space. Even the boring space, like all these little metals. What do they look like from a distance? greens and browns of this coat. Just like regular painting, traditional painting, digital painting is a lot of putting something down and then restating it by shaping around it, putting a shape down and then refining it. And just because I have a straight edge in the photo reference, it doesn't mean I need to end this with a straight edge. I think I want to soften that edge. So it just kind of softens and looks less finished at the bottom. I'm going to switch back to white because there's a lot to still be filled in. That gray can be deceiving. Because I have those brush settings turned on, it's never going to look too um, generic and too digital. Even when I zoom in, See, it's, there's a lot of kind of individual direction, size, emphasis. It really helps to use a tablet. It's just kind of the Im soft impression of the painting at this point. But if it works from a distance, then you're getting the values right. It's going to communicate. That's what you're going for. Sometimes you have to restate some strong color. 
that can sometimes be hard to find from photo reference. That's why I'm using some of my other references. And colors that are particularly helpful, you can always just paint for yourself up at the top. So you can steal from them when the time comes. A lot of the artists you presented on use digital painting to refine their work. To give its signature look. I'm glad you get to experience it and play with it here. See if there's anything in it that you want to use. Maybe for your final project. Every once in a while, you might just choose your own color to put in. if It's missing from your reference. And then you have it to steal from as you go. And with those shape variations on the brushes, you could actually do this with just a mouse, but it's just not gonna feel as intuitive and as enjoyable. I've had to do that while we were working remote just because not everyone had a tablet. But here in the lab, we all have access to tablets and they can, they're pretty important when you're doing digital painting. You can also use color to just get a darker version of the color you're using. So I have a lot of bright reds here. I don't have a lot of dark reds. So for some of these metals, I need that. So I choose a red from something on my palette. Then I go to color and I, I just move it down on the color selector to the darks. So however you can get to the color you want. I'm still just painting at 70% because layering that up, you can get a lot of variations. And I'm over painting my edges. I can always erase away later. I don't want to change tools now. Because I'm using a tablet, the lighter I press, the more I go over it, the stronger kind of one insistent line can be. And while I digitally paint, I like to squint a lot. It helps me see the values, see what's working. I'm pretty close to the end of my, my shape painting. So the next video, we'll do the refined layers on top of this. So make sure to save your work.